and we're back okay so before we were talking about reading from an excel sheet in c sharp and that was a video on how to read values in but now let's say you want to write a value to an excel sheet it's actually a really simple task and it uses a lot of the things that we used for reading an excel sheet so one of those big things would be including this interop assembly of Excel. Um, if you come to references, you want to add a reference to com and search for Excel. You have to have Office installed. I'm like 99% sure of that. Microsoft Excel 6.0 object library. And just hit OK, and that'll include it in your references here. So then we want to make a using statement at the top that says using this Excel interop. So if you come to your form1.cs, I've added a second button, which I haven't actually added. I'm going to add right now. And I'm just going to call that uh, right. And I'm going to rename it CMD right. So double click on that button. And now I'm going to say write Excel to use my new class that I created. And I'm just going to call this write Excel function. Okay. So that's really that for just setting up the button and then having it call this function here that is going to do the actual writing. We are going to say Excel test. We're going to open that same Excel sheet that we had earlier. So the first thing is a string with the file path. And then we need to declare a new Excel application. So we're just calling this Excel, but it's an Excel dot application object. And we're setting that equal to a new one. So we're creating a new one there. Then we're going to create a variable called WB, which is a workbook to hold our Excel workbook. And then WS, which is a worksheet, which will hold our Excel worksheet. So then we're going to say Excel.workbooks.open file path. So this is going to open the workbook in that file path. Or basically, it's going to open your Excel document and store it in WB. Now, we need the first worksheet. So you can think of worksheets as down here. This says Sheet 1. And then if you click Add, you'll get Sheet 2. So these are the worksheets. And we need the first worksheet, which with Excel, you get indexes of 1. So this is actually a 1. And then if you add another one, this is 2. And then you add another one, this is 3. You can also reference these by name, but I'm just gonna use a one for now. And what you can do is you can actually say excel.write to, what? So what you can do is something very similar where we get this range. So I'm gonna get a range inside of a worksheet. So think of a range as just something you could highlight. So a range could just be one cell or it could be like six cells. So we're gonna get a range, and I'm gonna get a range that's literally just C1 to C1. So this will make this range, uh, which I'm gonna call cell range, a variable that just has basically this cell in it. So then I could say cell range dot value equals pizza, if we're just trying to add pizza right here. So once I change that value, I need to save it, right? So we're going to say WB, our workbook, dot save as, and I'm going to pass that our file path. So now that's going to tell it to save it to our file path. And then I'm going to say WB dot close. All right, so we're going to go ahead and run this, and we're going to click right, and it's going to error on the file path saying that it can't access it because it's read-only. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to give this a completely new path. Now that that's been done, I'm going to open the new file that I just created. And if you look at it, it has pizza right here. So that definitely works. So what you can also do is I could change this from C1 to C1 to C1 to C2. I'm going to add one more thing process.start uh, using system.diagnostics, process.start, and I'm gonna pass this my new save location. And we're gonna run that, and now we're gonna click right. Now you can see pizza got stored in both locations. So if you do pass it a range like this, it's going to store this value in each cell within that range. 
But what if I did something like this? What if I pass it an array? Let's say hamburger, which I definitely say I almost misspelled. Which to do that, we're gonna say new this. Okay, so now we've declared this array in line. Okay, so after much struggling and research, I've found that the best way to set the value of a range using an array is this. So first you have your array here, which uh, just to simplify this, I will say, I'm gonna call this things. And I'm gonna say string array things equals this and declare my new array. And I'm gonna add some other fun stuff here like cars and trees. And just uh, this way we have four things here. I'm gonna say C1 all the way to C, D, E, F. So like F1. Uh, let's see, why is this yelling at me? Those will do it. Okay, so we declare, so we get our range, we declare our array, and then we use this set value, um, which takes the range value type, we're using default, and it takes an array. And we're gonna save it to Excel test five. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. I'm gonna click right. Um, Excel is gonna say, hey, do you wanna overwrite the file? I'm gonna click yes. It doesn't do that if there's not a file existing already. And this is the result. Wow, hamburger, cars, trees. So you can actually store an array into a range. And this is much faster than if you were to write each cell out. So if you're gonna write a thousand things to an Excel sheet, you definitely want to do it as a range using an array. This is just a much faster way of doing it. But yeah, that's about it for writing to an Excel sheet using C Sharp. Um, it's not terribly complicated. You can use the cell range dot set underscore value, like I said there, or you could use the cell range dot value equals and just set the value equal to something. So you just have to specify in the range which cells you would like to do. So that's about it for now. Um, thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.